Greetings, brothers and sisters. My name is Linda, and this channel is called Simple Help Now. It's been a while since I've been on this channel, but a lot is happening. I hope you're awake spiritually and are seeking God about the times we live in. Stand strong and look for the blessed hope. Jesus is coming soon. I can't say that often enough. I have some scriptures to share and a couple of dreams I've had that point to the upcoming rapture. I also want to share a word to encourage you. God is urging us to be prepared and focused and waiting. We are basically out of time. The scripture I want to share is James 1, 2 through 17. Read it with the rapture and coming of Jesus in mind. It goes like this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because of a, as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner than has the sun risen with a burning heat, and it withers the grass, it flowers the flower fades, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those that love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my brethren, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So that was the scripture. God is encouraging us, encouraging us to stand against sin that comes through temptation and to know that he is the father of lights and we are his first fruits. We are to wait for it, the rapture with anticipation. I had some interesting dreams this last week. I want to share a very short version of these dreams that point to our soon gathering unto him. In the first dream, I saw a gathering of many people in wedding dresses, and they were so joyous. They were talking with one another as they were gathered in one place. And then I saw Jesus wearing a shimmering white gown, walking among them and talking with them. He was smiling and was mingling with them and enjoying his moments with them. There were a few people there, however, sitting on a bench who had their backs turned and were unaware. They were still there. However, I felt that they were believers but had not been watching, but they were still raptured and were in the presence of Jesus. One person I knew was wandering around and I told him to go and sit down and listen. I believe the dream pointed to the closeness of the rapture. If you have saved loved ones who are not aware of how close we are, I believe they will be raptured if they're saved. The second dream I had, I felt, was about God's dealing in the world with leaders. There was a group of high leaders and business people, and they were discussing something very important, some issues, and I, I tried to tell them Jesus was coming, but they wouldn't listen. I saw water rising to the top of their shoes and they seemed unaware of pending danger. Then I held up a book and the title read, What Will You Do With Jesus? 
And then I pointed to a map on the wall and the nation of Israel was lit up. And I said, what will you do with Israel? I felt God, that God was, is asking the nations of the world these two questions. How will they respond to his son? And how will they respond to Israel? All of their actions should reflect these two factors. If you read Psalms 2, it points this out. Then last night I had a dream in which people were going to be raptured, but they had to lay on an ancient piece of parchment paper with writing on them. These look like ancient writings. I felt the paper stir and I saw some people begin to lift while they were on the paper. I believe the paper had to do with our eternal covenant with God and his promises. We are to trust in his blood covenant. I also felt that there was a danger in trusting in any other way or putting anything ahead of Jesus in our lives. Brothers and sisters, we are getting very close to going home. If you are not saved, pray to accept Jesus in his finished work on the cross and he will be your Lord and Savior. This decision requires commitment. He is Lord. Don't play around. Just saying the words with no heart commitment will be empty words. I also wanted to share a word that I felt the Lord gave me. Feel free to test all words as you should. And here is that word. My beloved children, wait for it. All of the signs are before you. Look and see. The time at the end is now before you, my children, in the beginning of a new age, a kingdom come age. You will enter the eternal rule of justice and mercy before my throne. Don't think like the heathen think. Be aware of the shifting age of the age to come. In my father's house are many mansions and you will enter joyfully. My dear children, your lives are in my hand and none will be lost who put their trust in me. For those who refuse, there will be judgment. I see every heart and I know my own children just as you know yours. There will be distress upon every nation. The monetary systems will collapse and the fear will be felt as my children leave. Very few will survive. The love will grow cold, even among families. No one will be exempt, the rich and powerful to the servant. All will be shaken. My children, look up. My, the kingdom is within you. You are a chosen people, perfected by the blood, my blood. My blood purifies you, not tribulation, works of the flesh, or self-directed ardor. Your lover is waiting for you. In the heavens, your bridegroom waits. You will see him as he is, and you will be changed from glory to glory into his likeness. Be joyful and jubilant. Your time is untime. Eternity is timeless. So that was the word. Jesus is encouraging us to wait and to be at peace and confidence, have confidence in his covenant. He is coming for us. He is our bridegroom, and he will keep his word. Be watching. Don't give up now. He is almost here. The signs are flashing. Thank you for listening. This is Linda from Simple Help Now.